In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a compliance scan of a SQL database hosted in Azure. Now, this is an Azure SQL database. It is slightly different than a you know, on-prem Microsoft SQL database, but it is still an SQL database. Um, so we are able to do a configuration compliance scan through Tenable. Uh, whatever you do, do not run a full vulnerability scan on this because this is not uh, a server that you own. This is a shared server. There are other customers on it. So you cannot run a vulnerability scan on it, but you can run a configuration compliance scan that will assess your particular instance on this shared server. So one thing I, I want to point out, um, if we go into our Tenable Demo resource group, uh, we have the database uh, down here. Uh, we also have a Nessus scanner in here. Now, you would think normally the Nessus scanner should be able to connect to the, uh, the SQL database, but these SQL databases do have firewall rules on them. So in order to get our Nessus scanner to be able to communicate with it, we have to go into the SQL database and click on Show Firewall Settings. And you see this box down here that says allow Azure services and resources to access this server. It's currently set to no. So if I set that to yes and save that, then the Nessus scanner is going to be able to actually communicate with the server and do that configuration compliance. All right, I'm now in Tenable IO and I'm going to uh, create a vulnerability scan. So just to to understand where I did this, I went under vulnerability management and clicked on scans. And then I clicked in the Azure folder where I like to keep uh, everything I'm doing for Azure. And I'm gonna click create scan. And from this, I'm gonna select the policy compliance audit. And I'm gonna provide a name of the scan. We'll just say uh, policy, policy compliance for Azure SQL server. And for the scanner, I'm going to select my it's a little off the screen there. Let me just move things around. Uh, Azure Nessus scanner. Now for the target, I've got to go back to my uh, SQL database and we'll see the target name is right there. So I'm just going to click on that and copy it and paste that in there. All right. Now, uh, next thing we have to do is the credentials section. So I'm going to click add credential. From the database section, I'm going to open that up and select database. Now the database type is going to be SQL server. Uh, we're going to use password authentication. Um, yeah, I, I'm not taking it out of a vault or anything like that. And I'm going to put in the username. Now in this case, uh, the user on here is SQL admin, but I have to also add in the at and then the host name of the SQL server. If I don't have that host name in there as well and that add symbol, it's not gonna work. Now I also have to add in my uh, super secret password and the database port, which by default is going to be uh, 1433. Uh, for authentication, this needs to be changed to SQL. Uh, I don't believe these Azure SQL servers support Windows authentication. And then for instance, um, I don't have a particular database instance I want. I want to look at everything. So I'm just going to leave it blank and click Save. Now, under the next step, uh, we're going to check on compliance and we're going to select a configuration standard. Now, the easy way to do this is I'm just going to type in SQL. That's going to narrow things down. And under database, I can see there's a whole bunch of SQL servers. Now, the one that I found that seems to be closest to what's running in Azure is uh, the 2016, but we'll see um, how that actually works. And my uh, version here, uh, I've done the scan a little bit uh, before, so I, I'm, I'm I already know it's 12.0.2195.0. And then I'm going to save that. And I should now have everything I need to launch this scan. So I'm just going to click Save and Launch. And we'll let that run. 
Okay, now we have the completed scan done. So let's click on that and look what happened. So it was able to see uh, some ports open. And if we click on audits, we're able to see it was running the compliance checks on that. So that is how to run a compliance check with uh, Azure SQL servers. Now, if you do run into any trouble, one thing I would say is um, edit the scan information and uh, under advanced, change this to custom. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to find the enable plugin debugging and uh, add all audit trails. Uh, that's going to be really useful uh, to finding out what's going on with your, uh, your database connection. All right, so I ran another scan just to show you what the uh, plugin output looks like for the uh, debug logging report. So we can see I've got this here. I'm going to click on that. That's going to take me into the, the actual scan plugins. Um, and then click on that debug log again. And we can see it's got an attachment here. So if I click view attachments, that's going to show me everything that it discovered in the, the, uh, in the scan from a debug log point of view. And it'll come up with this list of uh, all the logs that it gathered. Now, the one that I find is the most useful is if you scroll down to the database compliance check log. And this is actually showing a packet capture of everything that was going back and forth. So if you scroll down here, you're going to see um, if there was an error, you're going to see an error message um, about the, the login. Uh, but in this case, everything went pretty well. Um, so yeah, you can actually see the uh, SQL admin at Tenable, that was successful. So yeah, uh, the rest of this stuff, you would, it, it definitely would not be this wordy if, um, if it wasn't successfully logging in. And if there's an issue with the login, I would generally look at the credentials, the firewall rules, and see what's misconfigured there. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Thank you.